Hi students. This aspect of our introductory course on petroleum chemistry, petroleum and natural gas chemistry, is uh, focusing on organic structure determination. Um, during the course of the lecture tape, I uploaded the course web for all of you. I had uh, alluded to a website uh, published, maintained by a uh, society in Japan. It's called the Spectral Database for Organic Compounds. The acronym is SDBS. Well, in any event, I'm using uh, Google right now. If you type in SDBS with the Google browser, I'm using here uh, Chrome. Um, the first hit you'll see will be for the uh, Spectral Database. And uh, select that. Notice the uh, the extension will have JP for Japan. And when you L click on that, you'll be brought to the uh, database home page. Now each time you access the database, we use this in a lot of our courses here, other uh, chemistry courses. It's maintained by the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan. It's an excellent website and it's growing in uh, scope. Um, each time you click on the disclaimer, which basically is asking you not to download more than a singular spectrum. They don't want you to download more than 50 spectra a day. So once you agree on that, uh, then you'll uh, have access to the database. You can type in the exact name of the compound, but be very careful with that, because unlike Google, it's not going to help you. If you misspell methane, it's going to tell you there's no entry. So you can type in the compound name if you know it clearly. Sometimes you'll get away with the common name. Other times you have to have the formal name. But if you're not sure, uh, come up with the molecular formula. So for methane, it would be CH4. It might be safer that way. Or even uh, molecular weight. You can type in, I would like to know what you have in the database from molecular weight 16 grams per mole up to 100 or um, 100 to 120. If you know the chemical abstract uh, registry number, every every compound has a registry number. New compounds uh, are assigned numbers. Um, if you go to the chemical abstracts bound volumes in Hanley Library here on campus, or if you go online with a librarian's help, you can type in a registry number and find out the name or the structure. So if you have that number, you can put it in as well. Now, if you're working with a chemical, let's say acetophenone, and you found it in the database, every compound there will have an SDBS catalog number, and you can bookmark that. So if you come back to acetophenone in three weeks, you can simply uh, click, <coughs> click on SDBS, excuse me, SDBS catalog uh, 114 or whatever, and that would be your acetophenone. Um, over here on the right, you can look up the mass spec, the infrared, the C13 NMR, or the proton NMR. Uh, but normally, I would just put the compound in here. Let's let's type in acetophenone. Acetophenone, as you know by now, can be synthesized by a friedel crafts acylation with benzene and acetic anhydride or uh, acyl chloride, acetyl chloride, aluminum chloride catalyst. But here we're interested in uh, structure determination. So uh, we'll hit uh, acetophenone. See what comes up. Okay, there it is. Catalog number SDBS is 722. The molecular formula is C8H80. The molecular weight, the molar mass is 120.2 gram per mole. And then they have there the mass spec, the C13, the proton NMR, the infrared. There's no Raman because it's a uh, it has a dipole moment. Inactive compounds don't have infrareds. They, uh, you would have to get in a Raman microwave um, area. And uh, ESR deals with radicals generated. We won't worry about that in the petroleum course. First thing I want to call your attention to is the infrared by clicking on that. And then you will see what the infrared looks like, the spectrum for acetophenone, structure in the lower right, the principal bands that are showing up in the infrared, 
we're running from 4,000 down to around 500. You can uh, usually expand that by clicking on it. Um, in this particular case, uh, it's a no-show. But um, the infrared can be shown to you. And there's your uh, powerful carbonyl stretch. You have absorption to the left and right of 3,000 because of the aromatic hydrogens, the vinyl hydrogens, as well as the methyl aliphatic hydrogens. So you're to the left and right of 3,000. There's the overtone region, which can be interpreted, and also the fingerprint region. And uh, carbon, carbon stretch right around uh, 1550, 1600 reciprocal centimeters. There's the carbonyl ketone stretch, very pronounced. There's the infrared. Here's the proton, just so we can take a look at it. It's a 90 megahertz indurated chloroform solvent. And uh, remember I told you, if you have an aromatic compound, a quick check of the proton NMR will reveal uh, absorption bands between 7 and 8 delta units. This is running from 0 to 10. The methyl hydrogens are upfield at about 2.5 delta units. The integration, the ratio would be 5 to 3 for acetophenone, 5 aromatics to 3. And they'll also give you some uh, assignments. There's the shifts. The mass spectrometry, the mass spectrum, is as shown, familiar bar graph, molecular ion at 120, 120 gram per mole, 120.2 to be exact. A nice uh, molecular ion. The base peak. Uh, is about 105, and that would be loss of a methyl radical to generate a resonant stabilized acyllium ion and uh, the benzylium ion. And uh, here are the other peaks that are also associated with acetophenone. Let's take a look at one other example. Let's type in decane and see what we find. So we'll go back. And uh, let me put in decane. Hmm, must be a lot of people accessing the database a little slow today. There it is. Catalog number 426, C10H22, that's a saturated hydrocarbon and paraffin and alkane, 142.3 gram per mole. Let's look at the mass spec. Catalog number 426. And uh, molecular ion showing up. That'll be further down here. And they're showing you um, the base peak and other peaks that are showing up as well. Here's the peak data if you click on this. And uh, your base peak is 43. Your molecular ion is 142. The largest largest uh, peak furthest to the right in a, in a uh, bar graph. And uh, what you might want to do is figure out what would cause 43. Well, it's a straight chain hydrocarbon, right? So what we're doing is seeing, because there's no branch groups to crack off, it's probably cracking in half. And uh, that would be approximately uh, chopping off C5, C4. Uh, that would be uh, your base peak at 43. Uh, you might even chop off uh, C3. Now that would be C3H7, that would be 36, 3 carbons and 7 hydrogens is 43. So that's what's doing. You're cracking off a 3 carbon piece from one end or the other of decane. Okay, so that uh, introduces you to the database. In this course I'll give you a few hydrocarbons to look up and try to analyze the uh, base peaks and a couple of other peaks that may form. Hey, thanks for watching. See you down the road. Bye now.